Information Services Librarian at St. Petersburg College and an adjunct professor who teaches in both online and face-to-face -face formats a variety of computer and information literacy courses. While an undergraduate studying humanities at the University of South Florida, Chad was awarded a Library of Congress Fellowship archiving Leonard Bernstein's personal papers. During his Library Information Sciences graduate's work, also at USF, Chad became a technology liaison between the Bill Gates Learning Foundation and Florida Public Libraries. Chad's hobbies are spending time with his family, reading, composing, performing music, and he's an avid beer and winemaker. Chad is also Chief Technology Officer at Novair Library Services, a firm specializing in IT solutions for libraries. Without further ado, here's Chad Merritt. Chad, you're on. Appreciate it. Uh, is everybody able to hear me? Everything's good? Excellent. Everybody can see the, the slides. Okay, great. I appreciate it. Uh, well, today what I want to do is I'm going to talk about um, creating a slick web app using JQ Touch. Um, you, you might be wondering why why the spatula. Um, well, first off, I, will, I I like the color of the slide first off, and then you know in my house uh, a spatula is a tool that we use for tons of projects, not just cooking. So I figured it was de it was a decent metaphor when using a tool like JQ Touch to create something. Um, but you know I put this slide. Uh, or these slides on slideshare.net um, slash Chad Marin. Um, I also created, uh, I tried to create a bit.ly bundle for all the URLs that I referenced, but for some reason that was down today. So I ended up creating a bit.ly timeline. So if you go to that, that web address there, bit.ly.com slash, slash Chad Marin, I have a timeline of all the links that I'll refer to. Um, and also I do automate some tweets during presentations. Um, I did tag them uh, with the hashtag MSULiveCon. So if you're following that, you should see some automated tweets actually happening probably right now. So today I'm going to talk about JQ Touch. And what that is, it's, it's a jQuery plugin for mobile web development on the iPhone, Android, iPod Touch, and other forward thinking devices. Um, jQuery's motto is write less, do more. Um, jQuery is a fast and concise JavaScript library that simplifies uh, HTML document traversing, event handling, animating, and AJAX interactions for rapid web development. Now that sounds like that's a mouthful, I know. Um, I will be coming back to all of this in a few minutes. So first off, I want to talk about some big news, really. Um, I know there was a presentation earlier today about the, the 2011 Horizon Report. Um, which is a research project that identifies and describes emerging technologies that are likely to have a large impact on teaching, learning, or creative inquiry on college and university campuses. All this can also be translated into public and special libraries as well. But there's a chapter on mobile computing uh, where the time of adoption is one year or less. Um, and what I found interesting is that in the chapter it states that studies from the mobile manufacturer uh, Ericsson show that by 2015, um, basically three years from now, uh, or 8% of access to the statistic from the Horizon Report. Um, I apologize if you missed other things before, but anyway, by 2015, 80% uh, of people that access the internet will be doing so from mobile devices. And perhaps even more important for education in libraries or in there, of course, uh, internet-capable mobile devices will outnumber computers within the next year. So the report later on goes to talk about you know, electronic book readers, annotation tools, applications for creating and composition, social networking tools, all of this stuff with GPS and location and accelerometers and motion sensors, all this cool stuff um, is going to enable the device to be used. Uh, and all the mobile devices are going to come uh, an innovation uh, really quick. Um, and multiple uh, is 
is moving very quickly. Um, the Rise Report, for me, is highly recommended reading. I read it every year. Um, and it includes a ton of really great resources. Um, and I'm sure those of you who attended um, Deborah Lee's presentation today learned about that report as well. So, I want to, first before I get into JT Touch, I'm going to talk about why libraries should have a mobile presence. Um, you know, mobile devices certainly are evolving beyond simple cell phones, and they are becoming connections to a world of information. So, you know, and now, now that information is literally available at everyone's fingertips, why not strop? and 
and see what your users are accessing on your main website most frequently. So if the content, if the content can't be used while on the go, then you may want to reconsider adding it to your mobile website and or your mobile apps. Um, I'm assuming since we didn't get a chance to do that poll, that not a lot of your users are doing rigorous research while they're on the go, um, at least not yet. Um, but this may change, you know, once mobile devices become more sophisticated and when they offer better readability and include research tools like highlighting, annotation, sharing notes, and sites, features, and that kind of thing. Um, one thing we also got to think about is our database and ebook vendors. You know, they're a huge part of this equation, and if their content is not optimized for smaller screens, I, I usually call it mobile optimization, then there isn't much the device can do to render that content satisfactorily. Um, this, this is going to hinder the rigorous research part of it if, when, if and when that does happen. Um, of, you know, of course, there are the, you know, the iPhones and the Android phones out there do a much better job uh, at rendering web pages for smaller screens because you know, users can pinch and drag web pages. However, the lowest common denominator of phones on the market don't do a great job rendering web pages unless they're using something like Opera Mini or some other mobile rendering browser that does all that stuff behind the scenes before it displays it on your small screen. So still, you know, these browsers don't do a fantastic job, so it is important to design mobile optimized websites and think to the future. Some challenges and opportunities to think about. Obviously the small screen is a challenge. Difficulty of data input. Um, it's not easy to type with your thumbs unless you're a teenager. I mean, I still can't type very well, but I watch kids just writing really quickly with it. Um, browsers, <laughs> sometimes they're called user agents, are inconsistent. Some do things very well, some don't. And then different markup languages render things differently. But there's opportunities. Uh, with phones, there's this GPS thing where we can, we can look at location-specific data. I love the idea of having somebody walk into my library, and if they choose to have this option, all the announcements and stuff automatically go to their, to their phone or their device. Um, On-the-go messaging and voice communication are, are big opportunities for us. Uh, I'm going to quickly go over this. Four methods. You know, one is do nothing and just hope that your site renders okay on these small devices. Or you could reduce some images and styling. Um, there's some tools there, Mauser.com and Squeezer.net. They reformat websites for mobile. That's a simple way to at least get your site mobile ready. Um, not the best way, but it's something better than nothing. You can use handheld style sheets. Um, that's cascading style sheets. You could link to one of these. Um, what's nice about these is you can you can tell your website to recognize what their what the user is using, and if it's if it's an iPhone, then it'll automatically send them to a to a, a style sheet that will style the mobile view of that page. Or the other method is create mobile optimized content, um, and that's the one I usually go for. Um, and then create little placeholders. So when database providers start mobile, creating mobile optimized content, then you can um, just put those links in there and, and be good to go. Um, very, very important again is to ask your users what they want and watch them using your mobile site. If they can't find the quick, simple thing, it's not working. You need to revise it. Um, just a couple quick things. There's, there's tools out there that will take your desktop uh, version of your website and it'll give you a, an option to like look at it on the small screen. So here's an old version of our library website and I put it in the small screen rendering and you can see that the links up at the top kind of jumble and there's a big gray bar there which means that's flash. So flash doesn't work very well on a lot of stuff. So you can see that's what it would look like on, a, on an actual phone. So our desktop site is all fancy and stuff but on a small screen you know, it's not horrible, I've seen worse, but um, it's something you might want to look at. Um, you can also do an emulated website. Um, I'm going to talk in a minute about our very bare bones mobile site. Um, and I ran it through this, this emulated thing and it shows what it would look like to a user using an old Nokia phone. So not bad. Um, our desktop site on the right looks like that to a Nokia user. Do you think they're going to use your mobile site or your website? Probably not. They're going to look at it and go, this doesn't work at all. They're going to move on. 
I'm not going to read all these to you. They're also on that, that uh, bit.ly timeline that I, that I mentioned earlier. Um, these are a bunch of different emulators and simulators. Now, I mention this because it's a good way to test your mobile website or your mobile app to kind of get an idea of how it's going to work. The best way to do that is to test it on an actual mobile device. So when you get to the point where you're ready, call in a couple of people that have different types of phones and say, hey, go to this URL real quick and tell me what you think and look at it on an actual device. But again, emulators are a really good way to kind of get an idea before you do that, that testing. Um, I'm, again, I'm not going to read all this to you either, but um, I just wanted to provide you with some resources. Uh, you can use a simple text editor like Notepad, or you can use something like Dreamweaver to, to write these, these uh, mobile optimized web pages and apps. If you're using Dreamweaver, the, the more newer version of it, they do have an Adobe um, uh, device central, which has got a lot of emulators and stuff built in. Um, IUI is for iPhone. Um, MIT has got a complete mobile package, uh, completely open source, so it's, it's kind of tricky. Um, you definitely want to include your systems, your computer systems people, if you wanted to get into that. Uh, I mentioned earlier device detection. Uh, you can do that with, with that link there as well. It'll detect what they're using, and then you can send them to appropriate pages. Um, and those of you using Firefox, the web developer toolbar um, is really awesome, and that's where you can do your small screen rendering and that kind of thing. So before we explore J2Touch, I wanted to point out that it is fairly easy to create a very simple mobile-optimized mobile website using HTML and cascading style sheets. And then what's beautiful about this is it'll work on pretty much all mobile devices. So this was the first mobile-optimized website that I created. You will notice at the bottom that there are access keys so that users who don't have touch screens can use their phone's numbers to click on hyperlinks. Um, that's a key. Um, and also the, right at the top, you can see they can add their, their, the library's phone number right to their phone book. The code is there. It works on most everything except iPhones. Um, and there's, I have other code out there that can help you with that if you're interested. But it's a nice way for them to just add your phone number to, your, to their phone book, and then you're at, you can help them when they need it. Um, also, part of our very simple mobile optimized website is um, I, I added links to databases that are mobile optimized. And I want to I wanna reemphasize that it's very important if you create a mobile website or a mobile app and you don't connect to stuff that's mobile optimized, then you're defeating the purpose. You, you want to connect to things that, that are optimized for, for small screens. So I only put database stuff in there that I know is optimized for mobile. This is an old screenshot. So back in the day, there was only EBSCOhost Mobile and Medline Plus Mobile. Now, a lot of our vendors, a lot of our database vendors are, are making their content accessible via mobile, and that's great. Um, the College Center for Library Automation, which um, does a lot of our uh, database uh, uh, negotiations and stuff with us, they created a mobile version of our, our OPAC, and so I connected that to it as well. So you can do a very simple website using HTML and, and a little bit of cascading style sheets, or you can build something using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that acts like a native app. So on the left is our library website using JQ Touch, and on the right hand side is, is a similar um, mobile optimized page, but that was built using jQuery Mobile, and I'll talk about those in a little bit, the differences between them. I always like to bring this up. Um, because we always hear native apps and we always hear the word web apps. So I briefly want to talk about the differences. So with a native app, you don't have to be on the internet to, to do certain things. Whereas a web app, for the most part, it's required because it's on the web. It's a website, basically. But the beauty is with HTML5, the new version of HTML, there's offline capabilities. So you can actually store stuff offline on their phone, basically, and then they, they don't need to be online. Um, shareable content when you want to use Twitter and that kind of thing. You have to build it into a native app, but with a web app, it's basically just a web link that can be shared. And Twitter and Facebook and all these social services have APIs, um, software communicating with software basically, that allow one-click posting. Native apps allow access to hardware sensors, so your camera, your gyroscope, your microphone, your accelerometers, GPS. 
GPS. With a web app, um, access through your browser right now is limited. Uh, geolocation works, but a lot of that other stuff doesn't work very well. Um, of course, that's going to change as time goes on, but native versus web right there, I think native wins in that respect. Development, this is huge. When you're writing uh, a native app, you've got to build for a target platform. So you have to build it for Android or Apple. Um, and you have to know different programming languages for different platforms. If you write a web app, you write it once, you publish it once, you can view it on anything. I, in this case, the web app wins, in my view. This is just my opinion. Um, distribution, with a native app, um, most app stores require some kind of approval. Um, that's good and it's bad. Um, with Apple, it's, it can be expensive to become a, a, an actual developer. Um, with web apps, there's really no hassle. Build the web app and they just go to that web link and then they're in. So, so now I'm, com I'm coming back to JQ Touch. Um, I mentioned earlier that jQuery's motto is to write less, do more. And since I am mostly familiar with JQ Touch, um, which is a jQuery plugin, and that gets kind of confusing, um, I think this is true um, uh, because I am not a computer programmer um, by trade at all. I dabble in it, but I'm not a computer programmer. But I was able to figure this stuff out and get a few really nice mobile optimized web apps with just some basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript experience. So getting into this, let's go, okay. Um, so JQ Touch has user interface panels already built in. And we'll get a look at that in a minute. Um, it's got themes, there's two themes built in. Um, and it's easy to change the look and feel of them. Um, we'll see that in, in a minute too. Navigation is pretty much already built in. There's animations that are built in. So you can make, when you touch a button or to do something, you can make it do this like nice little slick fade out or, or slide up or slide down or whatever. Um, you can, there's a bunch of events in there so you can tap on things and it does something. Um, and it supports WebKit browsers. So Android and um, Apple and, and that kind of thing. So how do you get started with JQ Touch? It's really not as crazy hard as you think. Um, if you go to jqtouch.com and look for their download link, you'll download the zip file. Um, and then you're gonna extract, at last count, it was 116 files that are in the archive. And then you're gonna wanna create a folder on your desktop. And then I just named mine JQ Touch. And you extract all that stuff into your JQ Touch folder. Um, oh, and before I get into what, what's actually in that archive, um, I, do, I did create uh, two free mobile templates um, that are just generic library templates. So they're free. The web address is up there at the top. Um, if you don't feel like you know, installing all of it on your, on your server, you can actually do this, and this is already kind of built. Um, and once you get the hang of it, I'll show you the inside of it in a minute. You can actually go in and just change the, 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 the links to your own links. And probably have a mobile website up and running. Uh, Can you move Paul's icon? Not, it depends on your experience. If you're a pretty decent HTML and you, you write HTML, you can probably get it done in a day. I mean, maybe maybe it's four it's hours. Um, so feel free to go and download these these mobile templates that I created and just add your own information into them. It's good. Yes. Um, I can't, but what I can do is, um, I can't either. <laughs> what, um, what I'll do later is on the uh, Bitly timeline, that link is in there. Okay, thanks. And, and if not, yeah, 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 I can't read it. It'll work. All right, so when you, after you extract JQ Touch onto your folder, there's all these demos built into it. Um, the clock is obviously a just clock, so you could actually add a clock to your your mobile web app if you wanted to. You could even then put a clock and say, you know what, this is this is the our lab, and this is when it's open till, and that kind of thing, and then give them an actual clock so they know what time it is. Um, the custom animation, it has eight page animations. So you have slides, you have slide up, you have dissolves. I kind of like to think of it as like PowerPoint transitions, right? Um, so you have slides, slide up, dissolves, fades, flips, ways to kind of change the, uh, the pages and all that kind of thing. 
um, the auto titles. This is pretty cool. You can actually um, generate page titles automatically by just the link that refers it. So you touch a, a, a link and it automatically makes the page title that link title. Um, so there's no external scripts or anything required. Um, the floaty, the uh, ext underscore floaty is pretty cool. That basically creates a bar that just floats as you scroll through the app. I don't know if you've seen web pages that do that, but if you scroll down a web page, it actually brings the menus and stuff with you as you go down, so you're kind of always keeping together. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, the uh, ext underscore location, um, that is pretty cool also. If, a, if, if what will happen if you if you install that, if you add it to your mobile app, it's going to ask the user, hey, um, can we track your location? Or can you tell us where your location is? And if they say yeah, then your app can actually find out where they are, basically. Um, I haven't really got into that too much yet. I've tested a little bit and it does work. Um, uh, but I'm still trying to wrap my head around why I would use it. Um, oh, the, uh, the offline. Um, ext underscore offline, that's pretty cool because that takes the HTML5 um, offline feature and allows you to um, run your website and all that stuff offline, which is pretty cool. There's also tons of other things. You can add mailing, like your mail servers in there if you want to, and students can check their email in there. Um, a to-do list where they can create their own little to-do list, that kind of thing. Um, so how does this JQ Touch thing work? Well, basically, it's pretty simple. Um, there's one HTML file, um, and there's div tags that are set up for each panel. Um, it really, it, it reminds me of a really large web page connected by anchor tags. Um, and that's really all it is. If you look at, uh, if you look at it in Dreamweaver or Notepad, it's just one really long web page. And the themes can be easily changed thanks to CSS. So. Here's a couple things. This is some code. I'm not going to get into all the details of the code. But JQ Touch, again, is that jQuery plugin, but it's using version 1.42. And it can all this functionality can be loaded dynamically from Google code, um, which means you won't have to put anything on your server. Some, some, uh, some IT departments don't like you putting scripts on their server. Some want you to. So it really depends on. basically, 
are other links. So when you click on Find Articles, you see the little arrow, it actually slides over and then all those things are there. Arts, Humanities, blah, 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 are all there. Um, and then if I touch Arts and Humanities, it goes into a list of all our databases that are mobile optimized for art. So at first, it, it might be overwhelming, but after you do it for like literally five minutes and you figure out how the pattern works, again, it's a really long web page, you'll be up in no time. Um, if you want to change themes, there's again, there's two themes already built in. Um, in this case, I have um, Apple's theme, which looks more like an Apple iPhone. They also have a JQT theme, um, where that looks, it's more dark, and but it's still kind of got an Apple look to it. Um, but you can easily change those by just changing it to theme.css or whatever it is uh, in that Apple folder, or a, JQ, or a JQT folder for the other one. That's all you got to do is change the link to it, and it automatically changes the whole look and feel of your app. Um, one thing I want to get into, I'm not going to talk too much about it, but once you've done, you've got your app created, and really, to get JQ Touch up and running, that's all you really have to do. Um, if you just want a simple kind of native app-looking website, that's all you got to do is just get those links together. Um, but then you're going to want to test it. You're going to want to make sure it's it's okay and it works. So um, if you're using Firefox or if you're using Chrome, there's, a, there's an extension called Firebug that um, if you've never used it, it's amazing. It's an amazing tool that does all kinds of, of stuff. Um, if I have problems with the website, I, I crank up Firebug and I usually find the problem. Um, but what's nice is there's a thing in there where you can test your performance and it'll, it'll tell you how fast a certain web page displays. So it works good for desktop machines, but it also is great for mobile pages as well. So if your mobile page takes forever to load, you, you need to fix it. You need to take some images out. You need to streamline it some because, quite frankly, remember our users are on the go. If it takes them, if it takes a minute for your site to load, they're not going to go. They're going to go somewhere else where it loads faster. Um, W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, has a mobile OK checker. Um, there's the URL. All you got to do is go there and put your mobile URL in there and click test or whatever it is. It'll tell you. Here's your here's your issues. You know, I have two, I had two low um, failures they call them. So I was 96 percent, which is awesome. Uh, I was really shocked. Um, now my JQ Touch didn't validate as high as that, but you want to get into the green as as much as you can because then you know it's going to actually work well on most devices. Um, Ready.mobi has another thing to make sure your your um, mobile site is mobile optimized and ready to go. Um, this will tell you that it's going to display well on most mobile phones. It even tells you the speed on a Wi-Fi or, or 3G, how long it takes that page to load. 1.34 seconds is pretty awesome, right? So you want your page to load quickly, and these um, analytic kind of tools here are very, very helpful. Um, some other JQ Touch. Um, jQuery examples. Uh, the Florida Library Association, um, I actually built their mobile optimized conference program um, using JQ Touch. And what, that was the first time they wanted to try mobile. And it got, I think, about 600 hits the first day. So it's pretty significant. Um, and it's, it's getting a lot of use. They want to do it again next year. And they want to add all this search and all these different functionalities into it. Um, Florida's Ask a Librarian mobile service is also using JQ Touch. Um, Montana State University Library, they just built their mobile optimized website using jQuery Mobile, um, which is a little more sophisticated than JQ Touch. Um, JQ Touch is kind of a little just <laughs> subset of jQuery Mobile. Um, and then going completely away from um, libraries is another <coughs> tapped um, for you beer drinkers out there and you want to kind of share what good beers you're drinking. This is a, a really awesome mobile site that was developed using jQuery mobile. Um, it's always a good idea to, to visit these sites on your mobile phone and then go to the desktop version too and just see if there's any code in there that you can actually borrow for your own stuff. I do that all the time. 
Again, there's that link, uh, you don't see it, but um, to the free mobile templates for JQ Touch. Um, you can see on the left, that's the Apple theme. So if you like the lighter kind of Apple theme, you can put that in there, and all you do is change that link. It's very easy. Or if you like the JQ Touch theme, which is black um, and gray, a little darker, um, then that's, that's there as well. Um, so it depends on, on your look and feel. And you can create, if you know CSS, you can create your own look and feel. You can make it red if you want. You can add more images to it if you want. Whatever you want to do, you, you can do. And feel free to take these sites and, and go with them. Um, some other mobile development options. Um, I talk mostly about JQ Touch. That's what I'm mostly familiar with. Um, jQuery Mobile um, is very powerful. Um, Sentient Touch is another one that is, uh, I don't know, I'm debating now. I, I might switch to that because they're focusing on HTML5. Um, and I don't want to get into the discussion between, again, native apps versus web apps, but this, the more powerful HTML5 gets, the more web apps you're going to see um, because you can do a lot through it. And then you don't, need to, you don't need to design for Apple or Android. You can design for the web and be done with it. And titanium is, is more based towards, towards Apple. Um, so I'm going to stick with JQ Touch for a while because I'm more familiar with it. But I'm starting to explore these other um, mobile development options just to see what's out there. Uh, obviously, a ton of select resources here. Um, I'm, I will not read all this to you. But um, uh, some really good resources here. I should have changed that link to 2011 Horizon before I apologize about that, but, um, and again, this is all on uh, slideshare.net um, slash Chad Marin. Um, that bit.ly timeline, again, with all the URLs referenced um, is up there at bit.ly.com slash u slash Chad Marin. Um, another thing that I've been doing lately, um, if you're interested, um, or if you have any questions or anything, I mean, I'll be around today for a while. Um, but I've been using Google Plus Hangouts. Um, if you've never used it, it's a, it's a video hangout thing where you can hang out with, with nine or ten other people um, and just kind of hang out and answer questions and talk about things. Um, or we could use Skype, and then I could actually share my screen like I'm doing now and get into more of the nitty-gritty of the code and stuff if you're, if you're interested in that. Um, so, again, feel free to to hang out with me in Google Plus or through Skype or anywhere. Or there's a bunch of ways there for you to get a hold of me. Um, feel free to contact me anytime. Um, I, I love meeting new people and helping people with this stuff. Um, if you're using QR codes, um, there's a QR code there. This is, um, if you've never even heard of ShareSquare, it's actually really awesome. It got me more interested in QR codes because you can embed videos, you can embed all your social networking stuff, you can embed more than just one thing, you can embed several things in one code, um, and, can, and continue to edit the behind the scenes stuff on that code, and not to change the code anytime. Um, uh, you can follow me on Twitter, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of, I, I tweeted quite a bit during this presentation, um, I just did automated tweets that I hope enhanced what I was talking about. Um, feel free to, to explore that if you want. Um, I don't know if there's another slide here. No, that's it. Um, I don't know if we can if we can take questions or, or anything, or if there's anything you want me to go over again. Um, but I think the biggest thing is to just just go out and test it and play around and just add some links and see how it works. Hey, Jeff. This is Hi. Um, we, I think we have time for a few questions. We have another session starting at point fifteen. But, um, okay. Anybody want to pose some questions to Chad? It's like you're off the hook, Chad. Uh, well, again, um, don't hesitate to contact me and, and use those free those free uh, templates that I put out there and, and, and test it. And if, if it breaks, then you know you didn't you didn't spend a lot of time on it. So well, we thank you for your time. Um, I, put the link, I put the link oh, to good. Chad's templates from his Novara library services. I put a link to that on Twitter under the hashtag. So oh, right. I was you able to find them on his. No, I didn't. Sorry. No, no, someone found your link and, and put it up on, on Twitter under our hashtag. So. Our hashtag for uh, MSU Blizzcon. Okay.
Okay. To share that link. Great. The oh, link. the actual bit, the Bitly link or whatever. It's the Navar. It's the the it's Navar one. Yeah. Oh, okay. I appreciate that. I think it's the one we couldn't see. The, the, yeah. Uh, the oh. Icon up there. Uh, we Perfect. got through a, a we some small glitches, but I think we got things going. Nobody scooted out while they were having trouble. So I think we're okay. <laughs> That's perfect. Well, we Great. thank you for your time. I'll give him a big hand. Uh, 2.15. Yeah, I went on Eastern.